What up, guys? This is Casey is Raw again, and this is the evolution of the video game collection between the year 2009 and to today of August 2021. Um, the earliest time I recorded taking pictures of the collection is back in 09 when I was living with my late wife and it was started a little collection and it just blew up since then so I have tons of pictures from the past so and then I'll show you what the collection room looks today in the in the other game room so I'll start with looking at all the pictures. Thank you.
Alright, we're back, guys, and let's start up here. I got a bunch of these minis, like you got the NES Mini, Super Nintendo Mini, PlayStation 1, the Commodore 64, say Genesis, and a real pair of NES controllers, and one for the Mini. And right here is a Game, and, game Watch of Zelda. And that these are all my Famicom games right here. Nintendo Famicom. These tape holders are good for Famicom, uh, say Master System games. Sometimes it hold 2600, hold say Genesis, uh, say 32X games, Tari Jaguar games. So, and let's move down and this is pretty much my NES section of the boxes. It pretty much took the whole shelving right there. It used to be my uh, wrestling shelf back in, in late 90s and er, early 2000s. And I got F box Famicom Mario games. You got Mario Brothers. Then you got one, two, and three. Then you got Mother, or what became in America, Earthbound Beginnings. Mother 2, Earthbound. And then one and two on the Game Boy Advance, and three with the English patch. Uh, I recently put this shelf in here. This shelf retires and and unretired so many times, and that now it's unretired again, holding my Neo Geo AES and MVS uh, cartridges, and also it holds my Tari game albums. I've been picking these up, like, here and there, and then I got a Tari porn game, Bachelor Party, and behind... The Neo Geo games is a bunch of Atari 2600 games and those tape decks holders. And then over here, you got the Atari Jaguar games in their boxes. Then you got the loose games. Then Atari 7800. In this corner, you got ColecoVision. Then, all right here, right beside those loose Coleco Vision, you got the Intellivision games. They're kind of spilling over. And then you got the Odyssey 2 box games and loose games. And down here are the Super Nintendo and Super Famicom games. And I believe the boxes are behind there. And down here, you got the Intellivision games in their boxes. And down here, you got uh, some Atari games in their boxes. And then over here, I got my Famicom disc games. Lately, I've been on a... A... <laughs> I've just been hooked on these NES games from Asia, Asian games and European games. And then you got some of my higher price NES games, American. And I love these 3D printed signs. And then you start going down more NES games and more and then more and down here you got the unlicensed games on, on the right side and to just a little bit in the middle to the right and from middle to the left is uh, most of that is reproduction games. And that little stack is just more in normal NES games. 
and I totally forgot about the RCA Studio 2 games in their boxes right there. And then you got the N64 games in their boxes and a couple in their cases. And, and then some Nintendo VHSs. Some loose Nintendo game, uh, Nintendo 64. Here's an import game. Then this case has full Nintendo 64 games. And this case has a full Super Nintendo. And then you go down, here's the GameCube section. And then you see the Nintendo Wii. That's next, the Wii section. And then down here, you got the Wii U and the Switch section with the little Switch logo. And down here to the left bottom is the Fairchild Channel F games. And couple box games, and right beside that is the is the TI nine nine games loose, and right beside its boxes, and then you got the Hyperscan games, and then you got the Action Max games, and then up here recently I pushed those in. These are my Sega Master games in their cases and and loose carts. And some Game Gear games and adapter for you can play with on the Sega Genesis or on the Retron 5. And more 3D uh, artwork. And then here's my Sega Genesis section. And then up here, you got more Sega Genesis games. Some of those are, to the top right, are pretty much reproduction games. Show you. Not that Barney right beside it, but there's Tetris, Bubble Bobble, Pringles, Crazy Bus, and a bunch of other stuff. And then you got the 32X games, and then Sega CD 32X, or how they pronounce it. They have also 32X CD. They couldn't tell what it is. You had to have both the 32X and the Sega CD to play these games. And then you have the Sega CD section. Then you got the Sega Saturn sections. And down here to the left is Dreamcast games. In the middle, those are Sega Sega Pico games. Those are child games. And then more Sega Saturns in the corner. Then I'll show you some of the boxes I got here. You got Sega Genesis, Master System, you got Atari 2600. Back here, you got the NES box. Then you got Amiibos. You got old school uh, toys or statues. More Amiibos. That was part of Nintendo uh, Club. Was it Nintendo Club? Then a uh, big statue of Mario Maker. Then you got the Philips CDI. The green Halo edition of Xbox. Atari, Atari Pong. Tar, Atari 2600. Over here you got the Turbo FX 16 and the PC Engine. Then you got the ColecoVision. Then the TI-99. Then the N64. Then a monster size version of the PlayStation 2. It has a sound system. Then you got the top loader NES. Then you got the Neo Geo. 
Then you got a mini bootleg. You got an Xbox 360 hanging out right there. Super Nintendo. The GameCube. The Saturn. The Hyperscan. Then you got Atari Jaguar. The Black Dreamcast. This is the Retron 77. Plays your 2600 games in HD. Then my uh, Gold Star 3DO, my Intel Vision, and you got the Fairchild Channel F right there, the Atari 7800, and then down here you got the Sega CD with my childhood Sega Genesis in 32X. Then you got a bunch of wall art. A lot of those small wall arts I got from Target. Except that those two green ones. And that one wood one. A lot of those canvas ones are, are yeah from Target. Found these posters from a flea market. In my uh NES top loader that was signed with a bunch of guys. The three coins that came with the, well, you can buy at Best Buy when the Super Mario 3D All-Stars came out. And then I was a huge, uh, I was addicted to these arcade marquees. I found this Atari uh, poster at a flea market. And then I got these mini ones that I put on the side of this bookshelf. Then you got a bunch of stuff up here, like a PS3 box, Halo, Master Chief Helmet, a couple Pac-Man machines, Double Dragon for this Commodore 64. Then you got the box for the Green Halo Edition. There's a NARB box, Xbox back there, but it's a sports version, but it's a normal Xbox, Xbox One box. The 360 uh, HD DVD drive. The 360 we bought. And then some more signs. And I got a couple I need to, to hang on the shelf. And then you got a Breath of the Wild uh, sign. Uh, poster. Then over here, this is pretty much what I use as my desk. I really want to clean those scratches off. But it's the Street Fighter 2 Arcade 1-Up machine that's been modded that has over 800 uh, arcade games. Those were added on. Okay, then over here you got your PlayStation 1s. You got several big boxes in the jewel case. Then you got PlayStation 2. Some more PlayStation 2. And some PlayStation 3 games. Not a lot of PS3 games. And then a ton of PS4 games. A lot of them are VR.
And then over here, you got the Xbox. Like I said, I love these 3D signs. Then you got the original Xbox games right here. Then come down, you got the 360 and some Xbox One. And then down here, you got 3DOs to the left from big boxes and to the left. You got Turbo Graphics, 16 games loose. Some PC Engine card games uh, in their case, Turbo Graphic games in their case, and and then you got the in their boxes, and then down here you got Philips CDI games and software, VCD movies. I like these big size Philips CDI cases. And then over here, you got a ton of the box systems and other stuff. Like, you got the Philips CDI, the, the most generic looking one. And then the RCA Studio 2, the Wii U, the Switch, Mario Paint, the Live Circuit, Mario Kart, Microvision, a knockoff version of Genesis. Then you got the disc copier for the Super Nintendo, Sega Pods, the Sega Pico, the Sega Video Driver, Savix. We hadn't heard Savix. Uh, don't don't uh, feel bad because Savix was. I like kind of motion controlled before the Wii, and it's horrible. Seven eight hundred, the Magnum Box, to uh, Magnum Box Odyssey two. The box is awesome. And then you got the Sega Dream Pass, with a bunch of accessories. And you got the X Band, Sega Genesis Model two, Sega Mon Model three, the PlayStation TV. Then you got the U Force, the Latin Deck Enhancer, the Power Glove, the Power Pad, the Sega Saturn 3D controller with Knights, and then you got the adapter for the Clico Vision that would play Tar 2600. Then you got the Achimax, the Interactor. And then phone pong systems with a uh, Pac-Man plug and play. All right, when I wrap up, let me go to the game room and I'll show you what's in there. Over here, I got my Glag uh, Galga mini arcade machine that. I off for 50 bucks. Over here you got the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Wii U, down here you got the Retron 5, the PS4 Pro, then over here you got the Famicom Sharp. It's the Nintendo Sharp Famicom. Plays cartridge and disc games. And then up there is the PSVR. And then Nintendo Labo VR. The only thing in the bedroom I have is the PlayStation TV. Probably should just go ahead and put that in this box. I hardly ever use it. Oh, and I forgot too. Has I have a spare Nintendo Switch dock? It was just under a bunch of clothes. <laughs> and in the living room, I have the PlayStation 
three. And the reason it's in here is so in the living room we'll have a Blu-ray player. I mean, if I want to play PS3, I can play it in here. Or I can move it in the room, but right now it's main thing is right now it's a Blu-ray player for the living room. And I think not all of it, I believe. Yeah. So you guys have a good night. See ya.